Are you guys enjoying the day? We are enjoying the day. We got the boat out and we thought we hadn't seen Mark uh, in quite a little while, so we thought we'd come out. That's as good an excuse as any. Good. Well, when you have weather like this, you can't miss it out too often. It's, yeah, we got a few days of this summer now. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look after yourself. Have a yeah, job. you too. Good to see you. Good job scaring them off, Albert. Nice work. I'm Chris Hadfield. You may know me as the commander of the International Space Station or that guy who played David Bowie's Space Oddity in space. But when I'm not in space, I live here on Earth, just like you. And just like you, I want to keep it beautiful for all the following generations to enjoy. So take a flight with me and some really cool people as we look at Earth's future and how you can change it. This is Elevate Endeavor. I've always found myself drawn to music. The, the power of it, how it comes into your brain and then flips around and just evokes strong emotions. Sometimes music, you know, it's right there in the front and that's what I'm thinking of, but most of the time, music's just a soundtrack in the back of my head. I assume everybody's got their own relationship with music, a way to explain the world to ourselves, to try and understand what's going on and maybe share it. And someone who does that better than anybody I know is Serena Ryder. She's a Canadian singer-songwriter known for the, the raw, evocative nature of her music. And we sat down recently and talked not just about her new album, but the story behind it and the work that she's doing in wellness with her new record label, Art House. We were also joined by the first artist that they signed to Art House, and she shared how music helps her explain her journey through life. Serena, uh, you and I have played together once or twice uh, very randomly in the past, but I am delighted that you made time to talk with me today. Well, it's a complete honor to be here with you, Chris, and I, <laughs> I was just remembering the jam session that we had to, uh, to Sweet Caroline singing together. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> that was actually like yeah. one of the coolest things I've had the experience of doing, which is, yeah, we should do that again sometime. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> I, you know, wouldn't it be nice if if all of the world's leaders, uh, before they like went for a debate or something, if they had to sit down and sing Sweet Caroline together in harmony just once, I think it would change the whole timber of human relations. Uh, and it was a wonderful introduction, introduction to each other. I know for one album, I think you wrote 60 songs for one album, but but how do you, how do you do that? Yeah, it's different every single time because I feel like one of my greatest gifts is that I've had so many different seasons in my life, seasons of being a certain way. And each album I've created has been created in a different way as well. And a lot of it has to do with how, how I experience trust in the moment or how I'm not experiencing trust. And yeah, I've gone from like writing the one before I wrote 60 songs, I wrote over a hundred songs for the one before that one. <laughs> it was like, oh, you know, I didn't know that. Wow. At, yeah, yeah. But then there's, um, there's times where the whole album comes out right away. And that's how I experienced my last record. I wasn't expecting to make a record. And I was actually thinking because I have uh, my label now, Art House, and um, all of these mental wellness programs and different things like that. I had written a keynote speech. Speaking in front of people has actually been one of my biggest fears. Really? I can get up and I can, yeah, it's so strange. I can get up and play my guitar and sing because it's like, okay, this is my gift. I know I can do this. I, I'm comfortable in this. But speaking is, is different. If for, for me, it seemed more vulnerable. Is that what you're most afraid of is public speaking or what? What do you view as dangerous for you and what makes you scared? There's a lot of things. <laughs> There's a lot of things, you know, that uh, that make me afraid. Um, but public speaking always has been one of them. And so when I had written my keynote speech going, because I'd been asked so often to talk about my mental wellness journey, and I'd done interviews and things, 
but actually to get up and speak and tell my whole story was terrifying to me. So I went and I wrote the speech. And then after I finished writing the speech, I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing for a while. I'm not going to create an album. I'm going to go and I'm going to 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 speak around the country about my mental wellness journey and then the next sessions i had the entire album came to me because i had opened it up through going to this deep place writing this keynote speech that my whole keynote speech ended up trans translating into an album when you were set when you were that eight-year-old girl you must have been imagining what it would be like to be a professional singer and living your life on the road it was, you know, it was pretty magic at first. It was like this whirlwind and I just let it take me. There was some real magic and there was some real chaos. I used to drink a lot on the road. Um, I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to be scared that I wouldn't be able to sing the next day because of the fun I had the night before. But I've been, I've been sober for two years now. And that has completely changed my, not only my touring life, but my like, my life life in a way that I feel like I, I own myself. One of my greatest fears on tour was always losing my voice. Always. I was like, oh, am I going to make it through the end of this night? Because I sing, like, I have a very strong voice, a very loud voice and a very dynamic voice. And it's a lot to sing like that every single night. And I was always terrified. And I was like, oh, wouldn't it be amazing to not be scared every time I get on stage if I can do the full set, you know? You asked me what my biggest fear is now. It's like one of my biggest fears since I was young was losing my mind. So it was my greatest fear, but it's also ended up being my greatest gift was really um, losing my idea of myself because I've really learned to trust myself and that's what mental wellness, I believe, really is. How common is it uh, with the young artists you're working with at Art House, but also through your years of experience on the road, how, how common is it for people to have depression? And, and maybe that same fear that you had, that fear of, of losing themselves, that fear of, of, uh, of losing their mind. I think it's very common. I think it's very common with everyone in general, but obviously with artists, it's like we're meant to be very deep and very expressive and put into words and contexts all of the feelings and stories that the world has. That's that's a part of our gift and a part of what is expected of us. But then where, you know, so many artists are because of the the great dynamic uh feelings that we have th we go through so much pain as well right pain and pleasure and a lot of artists will end up trying to like have a mask and just to make everything okay and a lot of those masks are put on with with booze with drinks with parties you know it's like and it's put it's it's normalized you know to like celebrate and have a bunch of drinks what you're doing is corking a volcano you're not processing your emotions instead of having, you know, examples of people like going and calming down, having a bath, meditating and like being grateful for what you experience. They're like, we can't handle this. We can't handle the energy. So we, we drink and then we wonder why in like a few years down the road, all of these feelings that we didn't process. How have you dealt with depression? Uh, just at, at the different stages of your life compared to how you're yeah. dealing with it now? Depression actually, to me, just means deep rest. Your body needs a deep rest. And mm. for me, the reason why depression has always come up and come about is because of the scale of what I've experienced. If you're in the middle of something that's like really high energy and like something big has happened to you, like you were just playing at a show with like for me, like I've played at a show with like Beyonce and Jay-Z and hung out with them afterwards. And then like, you know, like all of these people are coming up and like you're talking, you know, like these big waves that can happen or, you know, you, your record goes platinum and you've, you're on the road all of the time. It's like, if there's no balance, the wave will come. And yes, like I do experience depression still, but 
it's something that I'm okay with and that I don't judge myself for because I know that it is a season rather than something that's going to stay forever. And I really am so grateful for both ends of the spectrum emotionally that I get to uh, experience. I get to experience such great joy in my life. The wellness program that you've put together at Art House, uh, finding balance and sort of normalizing the fact that this is just part of being wildly creative is there's going to be uh, some balancing um, vacuum on the other end of it and expecting it and, and making it part of who you are, letting people understand that, you know, health, especially here during the pandemic uh, has mm -hmm. been magnified to people, I think. Um, but I, mental health sometimes just gets lost as, as like uh, an unspoken personal problem where if you break your arm, no big deal. You put a cast on and everybody signs mm -hmm. it. But if it's mental health for some reason, because it's not visible, um, and maybe it's because just like you, we all subtly fear losing our mind. We, we tend to whistle past that graveyard, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and ignore it or, or belittle it. I'm interested though, in the first artist that you, that you signed to your label to Adria Kane, uh, I actually like you, she has Trinidadian roots, but, um, she, she has this lovely, deep, very individualistic voice. But what is it about her that made you want to sign her a, as the first artist to the art house label? Well, she was brought to us, um, to our attention by a really, you know, talented A and R um, person named Tia Gordon, and we heard her voice and were just completely blown away. And you were saying like she has this beautiful deep voice. She has this beautiful deep energy she's deep you know and she's very kind and she's very talented and she's very um compassionate and i loved i love how i feel when i'm around her and i feel like she has so much to give the world we have the, the lucky privilege of having her join us today through the magic mm -hmm. of technology all of us not physically located but all uh, <laughs> technically located and uh adria it's, it's great to see you thank you very much for joining us i, I was listening to uh the song that you did blue for a, a six-string guitarist a, a bad six-string guitarist like myself i'm just curious just mechanically did you write that on an instrument or how what is the process by which you can write a song that is so um unusually melodic at least to my ears it was interesting. Like I, I, I think that's one of the first songs that I've ever written, um, where it just kind of came to me. Um, I had a, a really good friend of mine. His name is Jack Roshan. He's an amazing producer, super talented. Um, and he just pulled out his guitar and just started playing this like melody. And I was just sitting literally in another room and I heard it and somebody was talking to me. And as they're talking to me, this like emotion came to me and I just started almost like writing at the top of my head based off of something that I had gone through mm -hmm. and how I had felt. And it was like, it was the first time that I felt like I could finally free myself of those thoughts. Um, and I guess that's naturally just how it came to be. And it kind of, it's interesting because it taught me a lot about songwriting just as a songwriter. I'm, I was used to almost in a way forcing myself to write about my experiences. And for the first time, I kind of just let them be. So from there, I've just, you know, started to slowly transition into that way of writing um, as an artist because it just feels a lot better. That's one of my favorite songs that I've ever done yeah. in my life. Your single uh, off the new album, which I understand is Peace Be Still, that's that's been released, right? Yes, it has. And, and like yes. it's it's being picked up and and uh, what did I read that uh, that Spotify on their chilled R and B. Uh, playlist with like millions of people are listening to your song right now as well. That, that's that got to make you feel good. Honestly, it's, a, it's always a great feeling when I know people are listening and especially when I have people reaching out to let me know how it made them feel. That's always been the most important thing for me because um, I always go into making music um, from an emotional space and I just want people to be able to like almost understand like the energy that I'm trying to put out. It's always positive. When Flowers Boom will be your true 
uh, debut album, I guess, and, and, and that'll be a, a major milestone to head over. I'm looking forward to hearing the whole thing. Yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward to sharing it, honestly. And it's been a blessing working with Art House and Serena. The album that you were speaking of, that uh, that it all sort of managed to get written in a much shorter length of time and maybe more efficiently than you have in the past. It's the art of falling apart, though, which which is a very, um, I don't know if that's a sardonic title or, or maybe just a, a factual title, but, but uh, I'd love to hear about it a little bit. The art of falling apart is actually the name of my keynote speech as well. Ah. And it really does chronicle my journey and my mental wellness journey and that it's not a linear journey. And each single um, I'm doing a duet and I'm featuring another artist after the singles release. So we're doing a remix. So Adria and I, Adria is the, on the first single candy, uh, which is a song about the importance of uh, being vulnerable and that is kind of the first step to your mental wellness. My mental wellness journey was my first step towards healing. It's vulnerability. Each track we're going to be releasing and featuring a different dancer in the video and also featuring a different artist on the remixes and then talking with each artist about their mental wellness journeys so that everyone has a spectrum of different stories and different ways of being so that I think one of the greatest gifts that you can have on your own personal mental wellness journey is having someone else who's been there too. Someone you can relate to and be like, oh, okay, I'm not alone. And not being alone is such a great gift on a mental wellness journey, you know? Serena, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, with the guests that I'm uh, having the chance to talk to during this series, we've been asking them to challenge me you know, an astronaut, challenge the astronaut with something. <laughs> so uh, do you have anything in mind that um, might suit your style of, of giving me a challenge? Well, I actually knew about this because your production team told me before the interview, I did some digging on you. And I know that you have a song that is about mental wellness that you wrote with M. Griner, which, oh my God, she's amazing. So I would love to hear that song if you're down with that. Sure. Uh, yeah, that song's called uh, So Easy. And and mm. yeah, Em and I had a lot of fun writing that song together. Uh, so yeah, it'd be an honor. I, I, I'll try and do it all by myself. But uh, sure, it's a, it's a lovely, thoughtful song. And, and it, it is about mental health very much so. So yeah, thanks for the challenge. I'll, I'll do my best. Can't wait. Four, three, two, one. I hit the stage with my band. I saw you guitar in hand. I said, well, how do you do? You look good for just getting back. Six months all alone in the black where you made friends with the moon. Since you've left, I've become adept at drowning in this life. Come home, may stones throw. How do you do things from a great, great height? The sky is falling and everyone is calling. But you make living look so easy. News coming down, broken hearts, they hit the ground. But you make living look so easy. You hit the stage with your band, I saw in the quicksand, but girl, how fast did you move? Still sang a song with your guts, you never looked down on your luck, you've had three heartbeats inside of you. Since I left you, sidestep drowning in this life. I can't tell you hide it so well 
That's what you gotta do to keep yourself alive. The sky is falling and everyone is calling, but you make living look so easy. News coming down, broken hearts, they hit the ground, but you make living look so easy. Anytime you want to come around, close your eyes and let the sorrow out. I will be here waiting by the river. Oh, what a friend, it's a good time to pretend. You make living look so easy. News coming down, broken hearts, they hit the ground. But well, you make living look so easy. Yeah, you make living look so easy. Yeah, you make living look so easy. Up in space, we exercise two hours every day. And we need it, because when you're weightless, you can be just perfectly lazy. You don't have to lift a finger, and your body will just waste away. And it's not so bad back here on Earth. But still, people choose to run or lift weights or, or play sports. People make a deliberate choice to exercise for their physical health. But have you ever thought about what do you do deliberately for your mental health? If there's one thing I'm taking away from this conversation is that the answer to that question is different for everybody. You just have to find what works for you. For Serena and Adrian, for me, music is a big part of that. But for you, it might be something totally different. I think the key is find something that makes you feel centered and then check in on, on family and friends. See how they're doing mentally and give them a chance to be there for you. Let's make mental health something we're not afraid to have a conversation about. I remember what you told me Said that you would always be here No matter what the circumstance and Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, then give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If, on the other hand, you did not like this video, then there's another button you can push. But then I would be very disappointed in you. And you then run the risk of disappointing someone not only on Earth, but in outer space also. And you would not like that, would you? To check out the next episode of Elevate Endeavor, click here. And for some other really cool content, go to elevate.ca. I'll be there.